Cyberpunk 2077 has some of the most ridiculous gun designs I have ever seen. Some of these especially are so over the top and hilariously bad that I actually like them. They're basically just huge memes. At the same time, there are some pretty good designs, along with some that are so abominable that they make me want to stick some iron in my- I know most people would probably look at the guns in Cyberpunk and just say, wow, this looks cool. I have no problem with this. But if you take a look under the surface and uh, really examine their designs, then oh my goodness, it's an absolute nightmare. Because these guns are loaded with immersion breaking errors and boneheaded mistakes. As a true red blooded American, I simply will not allow these dang Europeans to grossly misrepresent my beloved guns. So in this video, I'll be going over everything wrong with the guns in Cyberpunk and then rank them in a tier list based on their overall design. When I say all that, I mean I'll be scrutinizing these guns from a realistic perspective and determine how functional and practical they are. But I do also consider other factors such as gameplay, aesthetics, and in-universe lore. Before anyone in the comment section says it, yes. I am well aware that this is a video game, so no, it doesn't have to be hyper-realistic, but that is completely missing the point. The whole goal of this series is to overanalyze video game guns to see how ridiculous they are, because it's funny. Plus, it's educational. So I hope you're ready for 90 minutes of gun facts, because that's how long it's gonna take to cover everything wrong with these guns. Seriously, there's that many problems. And to keep this video precise, I'll only be focusing on the conventional firearms, or the uh, power guns as they're referred to in game. I'll have to address the smart guns and the tech guns in a separate video, because they are functionally completely different weapon systems. You see, all the power guns use typical modern day cartridges and are mostly based on real life firearms, which is what I'm more familiar with. Obviously. I don't own a fucking railgun. So with all that being said, let's take a look at the guns from Cyberpunk. Let's get started with something familiar to set a solid baseline. First up is the Unity. The overall design looks like it was mostly inspired by the USP-45 or the Mark 23, especially when you look at the iconic variant called Her Majesty, which comes with a suppressor and an underbarrel laser. Sadly, the laser doesn't actually work in game, it's just a decoration which is kind of lame. I guess you gotta pay a monthly subscription to unlock it. Other than that, I can see some inspiration taken from the P220 and the FK Burno as well, so I'd say it's like a futuristic fusion of all three. Either way you look at it, it's a bulky, full-sized, hammered-fired handgun with a 12-round magazine, and it's mostly grounded in reality. There is nothing too wacky going on here. It's also chambered in 45 ACP, meaning that it's more than capable of just blowing the lung out the body. It can shoot the cybernetic implant right out of a tungsten reinforced skull. If you look at the cartridge in the model though, it's not exactly shaped like a 45 ACP. Instead of being straight walled, it necks down near the tip and the bullet flares out, creating a weird mushroom head shape. My best guess is that this is supposed to be some kind of a futuristic version of 45 ACP. It must be shaped like that for a uh, extra penetration. At the same time, the casings that come out of the gun look to be a lot smaller than 45. This seems to be a problem with every gun though. Since they're all coded to use the same generic ammo, they share the same casing models too. I do appreciate how they added in a John Wick style press check for the equip animation. It's nice to see a video game implementing modern handgun handling techniques. However, the round isn't actually shown as being loaded in the chamber. It's still down in the magazine. So no, this gun is not currently loaded. If you don't believe me, then just look down the barrel and pull the trigger. It's a pretty silly oversight, because the whole point of doing a press check is to check and see if the gun is loaded and ready to fire. Besides that, the overall visual design is beautiful. It's one of the best looking fantasy guns I've ever seen. However, it is also one of the worst feeling guns I've ever shot in a video game. This gun is so slow and unresponsive that I've developed carpal tunnel from trying so hard to spam the trigger. That's because this game implements an artificial fire rate cap on all semi-automatic firearms, so I can't pin the blame on this gun alone. It's also jarring how slow the slide animation is. It almost looks like it's playing in slow motion. In reality, it would be quick and snappy, and this gun would have far less recoil too. I know it's a big meme to talk about how powerful 45 ACP is, but really, it doesn't kick that hard. The only way this dramatic recoil animation would make any sense is if your character has soft city boy hands, but that obviously ain't the case, because they got reinforced cybernetic arms. I really do want to love this gun, and visually, 
I do. It looks sweet. If it existed in real life, I would instantly buy it. But its raw sluggishness in-game is genuinely irritating. It certainly has potential for an S-tier if the fire rate and firing animation were fixed, and with mods, you certainly can do that. I installed a mod which fixes stats like damage, fire rate, and recoil, and now the Unity is easily one of my favorite pistols in the whole game. But of course, I can't rate these guns based on mods. I have to rate them based on what the developers gave us. As it stands in the vanilla game, the best rating I can possibly give the Unity is an A-tier. And that's me being nice. Next up is the Liberty, which is essentially the long slide GigaChad competition variant of the Unity. And holy moly, that is quite a long slide and a heavy ass frame. It's like you're the Unity and the Liberty is the guy she tells you not to worry about. I didn't think it was necessary to mention this with the Unity, but the Liberty really does exaggerate how thick the underbarrel portion is. It looks like an all metal frame too, so this hunk of steel would easily weigh over four pounds. For comparison, full size handguns tend to be around two or two and a half pounds, while long slide pistols are about three pounds. Only big hand cannons go over four pounds. Of course, the extra weight does help with recoil, but this amount just seems like total overkill. And even though it's total overkill, I kind of like it. Its sheer length and girth gives it quite an intimidating presence. You gotta be a real cyber chat to wield this brick. If you were to add on a muzzle brake or a suppressor, then it would be an absolute laser beam with no recoil. Or really, it might be so front heavy that it would have negative recoil. But of course, the recoil in game is still a little bit too dramatic. You wouldn't be able to mount a muzzle attachment on this thing anyway, because it doesn't have a threaded barrel. I'm not sure how your character is able to stick these attachments on there then. I guess they use a uh, Gorilla Glue. It's also kind of annoying how these pistols don't come with suppressor height sights, so you can't see what you're aiming at when using a can. They don't come with rails or a cut in the slide for an optic either. You have to install an aftermarket mount to use any optics. Red dots are the future, so it's pretty lame how these futuristic guns don't have any accommodations for optics right out of the box. The only other thing I can add about the Liberty is that the magazine capacity is magically higher than the Unity. It can hold two extra rounds despite having the same exact magazine. Even weirder, some of the iconic variants sport lower capacities at 10 rounds. I've noticed this with almost every iconic gun. Some of them have lower mag capacities, while others are uh, magically higher. But the magazine doesn't visually change size, which is honestly kind of lazy. But like I was saying with the Liberty, I do like how it looks. It's very pretty. But unfortunately, it shares the same problems with the Unity. The fire rate's too slow, the firing animation is sluggish, and the recoil is way too dramatic. So the highest rating I can give to the Liberty is an A tier. If you're wondering why I'm being so generous with these ratings, it's because I like to apply a grading curve, meaning I'm rating everything in relation to each other. The Unity and the Liberty are about as good as it gets. Everything else is downhill from here, so I hope you're in for a wild ride. Another familiar design is the Nue, which looks like what would happen if the Beretta M9 took steroids and bulked up to Desert Eagle size. The animation suggests that you're shooting a big meaty 50 cal, but in reality, it's just another 45. These animations are even more dramatic than the Unity and the Liberty, so I don't know what's going on here. There is a huge disconnect between the design of this gun and its actual performance in-game. It's a mid-caliber, full-size handgun, but it performs and sounds like an overpowered high-caliber hand cannon. There must have been a miscommunication between the design team and the animation team, or maybe everybody in the studio fell for the meme that 45 ACP is truly the most powerful handgun cartridge in the world. So besides the animations, the design itself is pretty cool. It's a little bit too bulky, but I do like the overall style. What I don't like, though, is how half of the trigger guard is just missing. If you dare to ever drop this thing, then there's a high chance it'll go off and explode, thus killing everyone in the room like the average SIG P320. I guess they cut that part out to make it look more, uh, cyberpunky or something. Or maybe they did it to reduce the weight. Freaking genius, I know. It's kind of silly, but not a huge deal, I suppose. Simply just do not drop your gun. At the very least, it comes with normal looking attachment rails, but unfortunately, you can't attach anything to them because the developers never got around to adding underbarrel attachments to this game. All you got is optics and muzzles. That's it. Overall, I do like the design of the new way, but the main thing holding it back is how dramatic the animations are. They are way too bombastic for a 45 especially for how heavy this gun is. I'd say the Nue is on the same level as the Unity and the Liberty, so I'll put it alongside them in A tier.
Now for a real hand cannon, we have the Tamayura. It has the same animations as the Nue, but I'm guessing these animations were originally only meant for the Tamayura, then were later reused for the Nue, because the developers rushed the shit out of this game. Anyway, there's nothing specifying exactly what it's chambered for, but it does look like some kind of big 50 cal pistol round. Basically, the Tamayura is like an uglier, more rounded version of the Desert Eagle. That doesn't mean it should have a sluggish animation and a capped fire rate though. I'm guessing the developers did this on purpose because they thought the sluggishness and slow fire rate would make it feel more powerful. Well, newsflash pal, you can spam hand cannons in real life. I've also heard some people say that this thing looks a lot like the 10mm from Fallout 4. And my god, they're right. It has the same problem where it looks really bubbly, almost like a nerf gun. It's not quite as comical as the 10mm, but it does also have a big brick under the barrel. Like yeah, having some extra weight could be useful for recoil. Like for the Unity and the Liberty, it was fine. A little bit much, but it did make the gun look cooler. This gun though, it's way too much, and it's just fucking ugly. This brick really ain't adding much function to the gun. There's no integrated attachment here, nor are there any rails. Unless those grooves on the side are supposed to be some kind of rail. Jeez, these guys seriously don't have a standardized universal rail system. It looks like every gun is using something completely unique, which is not very efficient, nor convenient. I'm also confused about the overall construction of this pistol. It looks like they tried to copy how the Desert Eagle works, but they did it completely wrong. You see, the Desert Eagle doesn't function like a typical recoil operated or straight blowback pistol with a slide. The Desert Eagle has a rifle style bolt and a rifle style gas up operating system, so it doesn't have a full slide. It's cut in half, only the rear portion reciprocates. The Tamayura is obviously trying to mimic this design, but the cut in the slide is much further up and it doesn't have a rifle style bolt, nor a gas operating system. It seems to function like a typical low caliber pistol, which doesn't make any sense. When it comes to high caliber semi-automatic pistols, your best bet is to go with a rifle style bolt because you need a stronger mechanism to handle how powerful the round is. The Tamayura though is built like a typical low caliber pistol, so I don't think this mechanism could handle how powerful the round is. It would probably blow up in your face after a few shots. I also hate the fact that this is a striker fired hand cannon with a trigger safety. Like holy hell, this thing would have the mushiest, most rubbery, disgusting trigger pull imaginable. Hammer fired handguns are pretty much always going to have crispier, smoother, and lighter triggers, which then makes them more accurate. Striker fired guns though, tend to have mushier, heavier triggers, and you'll often see them paired with a trigger safety, which makes the trigger pull even heavier. This combination is mostly used on concealed carry type pistols, where you want the sleekest design possible with no exposed moving parts and a heavy enough trigger to ensure that it's not going to accidentally discharge and blow your balls off. It's more about comfortability than pure accuracy in this case. But when it comes to a hand cannon, you definitely don't want this design. You want your gun to be as accurate as possible, so your best bet is to go with a hammer fired single action mechanism and with a rifle style bolt too. You know, just like the Desert Eagle. Literally all they had to do was copy the core functionality of the Desert Eagle, but they decided to change it up solely for the sake of making it look more unique, without realizing the consequences of that. It's like the opposite of the problem we had earlier. The Tamayura is supposed to be a hand cannon, but it's built like a 9mm Glock. This gun makes no sense. Its design is extremely counterintuitive, and I do not like it. I think I'll put this big stinker in D tier. Next up is a pistol called, uh, The Factor. <laughs> Just kidding. It's sponsor time. Are you guys tired of cooking? It's such a hassle, isn't it? I mean, that whole process can take, like, two hours. Or maybe I'm just slow. Either way, I would much rather spend my valuable time gaming instead. You see, cooking is for cavemen, and we have technology, such as microwaves, and that's really all you need when you sign up for Factor, because they deliver you tasty TV dinners that can be prepared in two to three minutes. And the best part is, they don't taste like wet cardboard. Seriously, I've tried this stuff for myself, and it's pretty dang good. Here, let me put y'all on some good stuff. The taco bowl? Yeah, that's what you want. Go ahead and order like 10 of those. Well, I mean, you should probably try some of their other stuff too, because they got 35 meals to choose from each week, with something to suit every diet. Factor is already a pretty good deal. It's cheaper than takeout or going to a restaurant. But you know what? 
I'll make that deal even better. You guys can use my link in the description or the QR code on screen to get 50% off your first box of Factor. Plus, it'll give you 20% off your next four boxes. Big thanks to Factor for sponsoring the channel so I can make epic videos like this. And you know what? If I can get just 100 of y'all to sign up for Factor, then that means I'll be able to afford an epic cosplay piece. It's, uh, very necessary for the channel, I swear. Now for a truly based hand cannon, we have the Malorian 3516, which is Johnny Silverhand's personal sidearm. This gun perfectly represents Johnny as a person. It's huge, flashy, bombastic, extremely impractical, and overly complicated, but also very badass. The animations on this one are just ridiculous. Ridiculous, but they're so ridiculous and over the top that I actually like it. You know, sometimes I can appreciate when developers just say fuck it and go balls to the wall. That's exactly what this pistol is all about. Unlike the Tamayura, this one is built like a rifle, with a rifle-style bolt and a uh, rifle-style magazine too, because it's shooting a full-sized rifle cartridge, and you uh, can't really fit that into a pistol grip. It almost looks like it was originally built as a full-sized rifle and then cut down later on, but no, it was built like this from the factory. It was a custom order for Johnny himself. To really feed his ego, they made sure to make this pistol truly one of a kind, because it functions like no other pistol in this entire world. The feeding mechanism on this thing just makes no sense. The magazine is up here, but the bolt in the chamber are way back there. You see, normally, the bolt would be placed directly above the magazine to make the feeding process as simple and reliable as possible. The fastest path to your destination is a straight line after all, and uh, there's really no reason to deviate from this design. But with the Malorian, the rounds would have to go up, then shift direction and go backwards, and then up again, where they can then be chambered and fired. So is this concept technically possible? Yes. It's something seen with the glorious Mars automatic pistol, a uh, really obscure firearm from the early 1900s. It has a really weird feeding mechanism that doesn't feed in a straight line. It goes up, then back, then up again. So why exactly would this design ever be necessary? Well, it's not. But if I had to come up with a reason, I guess it's because you can squeeze out an extra inch of barrel length without extending the whole length of the gun, meaning it's basically a bullpup. But it's so overly complicated for no real tangible benefit that it's not worth all the trouble. When making this gun, the designer was too busy wondering whether or not he could, instead of wondering whether or not he should. As expected, the Mars pistol never got too popular. Only about 80 of them were ever made, and it stopped production in 1907. Like I said, it is needlessly complicated for almost no real benefit. Plus, the recoil on this bad boy was absolutely dastardly. Anyone who ever shot it once never wished to shoot it again. It was so bad that even the British declined to adopt it as a service weapon, and they adopted the L85, so that's really saying something about how bad the Mars pistol was. So with all that being said, I think it's pretty funny that these cyberpunk devs base the feeding mechanism for the 3516 on an objectively bad, failed pistol design from the early 1900s. Like I said, this could potentially work, but it's just unnecessary and unreliable, and they didn't implement the feeding mechanism correctly anyway. The animations do show a mechanism picking up rounds and carrying them all the way to the chamber, but it's not connected to anything. It just sort of floats around in a diagonal motion. It seems to be operating on pure magic. Also, I don't see why the bolt on this thing has to spin around to feed cartridges. It just seems like extra flair to serve solely as eye candy. I mean, overall, that seems to be the main purpose of this gun. It's just pure eye candy. It's not meant to be practical or reasonable. Its goal is to be as flashy and unique as possible. The melee animation especially is absolutely absurd. I don't know what the hell is happening, but you kind of smack your wrist and the whole gun just fucking explodes. For some reason, this consumes all 10 rounds in the magazine, which obviously doesn't make any sense because you can't shoot 10 bullets at once. The magazine itself doesn't make any sense either. It says it holds 10 rounds, but this thing looks like it could hold like 4 at best. Maybe 5 if you push down really hard. What's even weirder are the bullets. They're flat like pancakes. It's like you're shooting deadly quarters at people. I'm not a big fan of the laser light combo either. Not only are they completely non-functional in-game, but they're fused into the weapon itself instead of using an attachment rail. Again, these guys seriously don't have a standardized rail system for attachments, which is really goofy. Also, the grip itself looks like it hasn't even rendered in yet. That should be looking like PS2 graphics. <laughs> I thought this was some kind of texture bug, but no. 
that's just how it's supposed to look. It's some kind of translucent plastic material apparently, which gives it that blurry low resolution effect. It looks really cheap and flimsy honestly, like something you'd see on a water gun from Walmart, so it's kind of jarring how it looks in comparison to the rest of the gun. Overall, this gun design is very silly and completely unnecessary. If you really want a GigaJad hand cannon that shoots big rifle rounds that has a 5 round capacity, then your best bet is to go with a revolver design like the BFR or the 500 Magnum. Trying to shove a full size rifle round into a semi-automatic pistol, then giving it a really complex feeding mechanism just to squeeze it on an extra inch of barrel length is completely absurd. If I was being 100% serious, this gun would go in the F tier, but it's so stupid and impractical, so over the top and ridiculous, that it's actually hilarious. You gotta be a real giga chat like Johnny Silverhand to wield a gun this shitty. So you know what? I'll put the 3516 in S tier. Best gun in the game, hands down. Now for something a little more humble, we have the M10AF Lexington, which is a 9mm machine pistol. On the surface, it may look like a futuristic Glock, but it functions more like a Ruger. It doesn't have a moving slide like most modern pistols. The only part that moves is the bolt, and the charging handle is on the rear end of it. What makes this gun especially interesting is that it's a full auto machine pistol, but with a really slow fire rate. It chugs along at about 500 rounds per minute which is uh, not very characteristic for a machine pistol. You see, real machine pistols tend to have really high fire rates, usually over 1,000 rounds per minute, because they have really light slides or bolts. And to put it simply, a lighter bolt means that the gun is going to cycle faster. So, if you want to slow down the cyclic rate, then you have to make the bolt heavier, much like with what's seen on the Uzi. It has a heavy telescoping bolt, so it shoots relatively slow at 600 rounds per minute. On the other hand, you have the Micro Uzi, which is basically the same gun, but it's much smaller and lighter, so it has double the fire rate at 1200 rounds per minute. With the Lexington, well, this bolt don't look too heavy. It's also skeletonized, which would make it even lighter. So in reality, this thing would easily shoot over 1000 rounds per minute. I guess the developers slowed it down to make it more, uh, balanced in-game. But you have to admit, it would be a lot more fun if they gave it a realistic fire rate. I also doubt that this magazine could hold 20 rounds of 9mm. It looks more like a 15 rounder. Maybe 17. And again, what the hell is going on with all these damn trigger safeties? If you're using a machine pistol, then safety is the last thing you're worried about. What's especially goofy is how chunky the attachment rails are. Like holy moly, these are not Picatinny rails, these are Pika Mega rails, so good luck finding anything compatible with them. I also think it's really funny how the Dying Knight variant comes with an underbarrel bayonet attachment. Or really, it's not much of an attachment because you don't utilize the rails to attach the bayonet, you completely swap out the parts, which further proves just how useless these rails are. And yeah, you can put a bayonet on a pistol. It has been done throughout history, but they were virtually never used. Nowadays, it's more something you would see on a cringe tactical mall ninja build. But okay, assuming you would use this bayonet, the melee animation in-game doesn't show your character stabbing with it. You still do a pistol whip, so it's completely pointless. Even if there were a stabbing animation, this knife isn't long enough to get any considerable amount of penetration. Sorry guys, but one inch of penetration just ain't gonna get the job done. I think this thing is legally considered a micro bayonet. Like come on, if you're gonna mount a bayonet, at least make sure that it extends far enough from the barrel so that you can actually stab people with it. Overall, I can't say the Lexington is too bad. I mainly think it's lame because of how slow the fire rate is. I think I'll give this one a B tier, because it's not quite as aesthetic as some of the other pistols. For the last of the power pistols, we have my personal favorite, the Slotomatic. It's another machine pistol, but this one is chambered in 45. At first glance, it may look like a nerf gun, or even a squirt gun, but don't let that fool you, because this thing squirts out lethal doses of lead. I know it may look like a piece of junk, and well, that's because it is. It's a flimsy plastic gun made by a company called Budget Arms, so that should tell you everything you need to know. This thing was purposely built to be as cheap as possible, even cheaper than a high point, if you could imagine. It's so cheap and shitty in fact, that you can buy them from vending machines. The European mind simply cannot comprehend this. And huh, for some reason, all these vending machines tend to be in low income neighborhoods. Weird. These things are so unreliable that they gave it a 20 round warranty 
but it comes with a 36 round magazine. So chances are you wouldn't be able to finish a whole mag before it blows up on you. But this magazine wouldn't hold 36 rounds anyway because it's a lot shorter than a real 30 round 45 ACP magazine. It looks more like a 20 rounder, which means it would be in line with the warranty. Even if you do finish the whole magazine, the manufacturer heavily recommends that you never reload this gun. They say that you should throw it away and buy a new one. What a genius marketing strategy to get continuous sales. With all that being said, I do think they are exaggerating how terrible this gun design would be. The internal mechanism, the actual gun part of the gun, is still all metal, and it's based on open bolt machine guns like the MAC-10 and the Uzi, which are fairly simple and reliable designs. If this thing for some reason had no metal parts, if every single part was plastic or 3D printed or whatever, then yeah, at that point it would most certainly not last very long. But since it's still using all metal parts for the internal mechanism, then it really shouldn't be this fragile. A lot of modern firearms have metal interiors with polymer exteriors and uh, there's no issues with the reliability because modern polymers are quite strong and highly durable. So really, the main problem here is that they made the frame from the cheapest plastic they could possibly find. It's probably made from recycled plastic bags. If they would have made the frame from high strength polymer, like a uh, Glock for example, then there wouldn't be much of an issue besides the fact that it's shaped like a toy. But of course, the main idea behind this gun is to have the lowest price possible to appeal to the poorest demographic, which is uh, pretty much everyone living in Night City. And besides, everything is disposable in Night City, especially you. Also, if we're being real, the main reason why this gun is disposable is because it's marketed towards criminals. In the description, it says that anyone, no matter their criminal background, should have access to a firearm. So yeah, they intentionally made a disposable, untraceable crime gun. I have no clue what the gun laws are like in Night City, but they must be pretty darn lax if felons are allowed to buy firearms from vending machines. Night City is too based for its own good it seems. So the lore behind this gun is pretty hilarious, and I can respect the developers for making an absolute meme gun just for the sake of a little bit of world building. So you know what? I'll put this piece of junk in S tier. It's goaded, and I genuinely want one. Now let's move on to the revolvers. First up is a big hunk of iron called the Overture. It's a very typical looking double action revolver, but with a futuristic skin on it. This thing also has a gap in the trigger guard, much like the new way from earlier, which again is a uh, kind of silly and completely pointless. It must be really tricky to do a gunslinger spin move like that when there's a big gap in the trigger guard. I don't think they really thought this one through. The grip really sucks too. Instead of it being smooth and ergonomic, it has sharp angles, which would make it really uncomfortable to hold. The reload animation also fails to show your character operating the ejector rod. The shells just uh, fall out by themselves. And you don't eject just the shells, you eject the whole cartridge, bullet included. So I guess you never shot these bullets in the first place. Turns out you killed your enemies with pure imagination. Either that, or the whole game is just a faulty simulation that doesn't abide by the laws of reality. Another flaw with the reload is that every single round falls out, even if you only shot one. Probably because they don't fit snug in the cylinder in the first place. Either way, it's completely unnecessary to eject a whole bunch of unspent rounds when you're just gonna end up replacing them. A better way to go about this is to only eject the spent rounds and then replace just those. Cyberpunk does have a partial reload mechanic, so they do have the ability to implement this. They just decided not to. Overall, I do like this gun. It feels pretty badass and it looks cool, but it also has quite a few boneheaded mistakes. I'll put the Overture in B tier. Next is the DR5 Nova, which looks like some kind of a deformed hunchback. You're probably wondering why the cylinder is in the wrong spot. Well, that's because it's based on the Mateba MTR8. You see, the whole reasoning for placing the cylinder so far down and up front is to lower the bore axis, which then reduces the recoil by having it more in line with your hand. Basically, a lower bore axis means the muzzle doesn't rise as much. This seems like a good idea. However, placing the cylinder this far up also means that the barrel is shortened, so it's like an anti-bullpup. You get less range and less velocity for the same overall weight and size. So the MTR8 never really caught on, it was too niche of a design. And really, the biggest problem here is how far forward the cylinder is, because you don't need to do that to have a low bore axis. The later model from Mateba, the Unica, would improve upon this concept by having the cylinder in the traditional spot, but instead of shooting from the top chamber, it shoots from the bottom one. It's also pretty neat because it's a cylinder 
self-cocking revolver, it always shoots with a crispy single-action trigger pull, meaning it's technically also a semi-automatic handgun. So I think it's kind of funny how the developers intentionally chose the outdated, obsolete design from Ataba instead of going with the better one. All of this makes even less sense when you look at the description. It's described as a traditional revolver, which harkens back to the Wild West, but it's anything but traditional, because it's based on a really obscure, non-traditional design from the 1980s. It even says that this revolver is prone to failure and jamming. How in the hell do you make a revolver that is prone to jamming? You gotta be advanced stupid to do that. Oh, but don't worry, it's easy to fix because of its simple design and construction. But again, this design is not simple. To make it worse, the description says that it has high recoil, despite it having a low bore axis and an intentionally low recoil design. Not only that, but this thing is apparently easily concealable, despite it being a full-size revolver. So naturally, everyone in Night City has one because of how cheap it is. But a complex niche design like this would not be cheap. Holy shit. They somehow managed to describe this gun completely wrong in every way possible. It's like they had to give a presentation last minute, so they just whipped up a randomly generated chat GPT script. If these guys really wanted a cheap and simple revolver, one that would be convenient for carrying, then they should have just gone with a 38 snub nose. That design would be a lot more reliable too. And if they wanted to have a cool, non-traditional sci-fi revolver, then they should have based the design off the Mateba Unica. But it seems they picked the worst possible option for both roles. They took the MTR-8 and somehow made it 10 times worse. Because god dang, this thing has no style. It's built like a high school lunch lady. Even worse, the Nova's reload shows your character dumping out the whole cylinder with ease, which makes no sense because there's nothing holding the cylinder in place. It needs something in the middle to, you know, revolve around. Either way, this reload technique is very antiquated. Switching out the whole cylinder was only done for black powder revolvers, because, you know, with black powder, it can take like a whole minute to reload your gun. With modern revolvers though, there is no reason to replace the whole cylinder when you could just use a speed loader instead. But easily, the worst part about this gun is that it has a trigger safety. Never have I seen a trigger safety on a revolver. That's just goofy. Like, come on, these guys are just randomly throwing trigger safeties on everything. Probably because they think it's more futuristic or something. So all around, the DR5 Nova is an absolute disaster. It's not even funny bad, it's just bad. And I genuinely hate it. Congratulations, you get a spot in the F tier. Sheesh, I can't believe these guys managed to mess up a revolver. Hopefully the next one won't be too- Oh my god, I can't believe they did it. They did the meme. They made a magazine-fed revolver. Like, come on, everyone knows that you don't use magazines to feed a revolver. Because, you know, the rounds are in the cylinder, the part that revolves, which is why it's called a revolver. What makes it even more hilarious is that the action of this gun is based on the Luger. So you have a Luger revolver that shoots high explosive rounds. This gun must have been designed by a CNN journalist. But the worst part is, this gun could be functional. Theoretically at least. You see, there is a real-life magazine-fed revolver known as the Landstad 1900. It feeds by carrying the rounds from the magazine and into the bottom of the cylinder. Then the cylinder rotates up, the round gets fired, and the casing is then extracted from the cylinder and ejected from the top of the gun. Looking at the Mattel, that seems to be how it would work. Thankfully, one of my fans drew up this glorious schematic to uh, try and make sense of this ridiculous design. So why exactly would this design ever be necessary? Well again, it's not. There is absolutely zero reason to make a magazine fed revolver. This design is extremely redundant, and all it does is make the feeding mechanism ridiculously complex for zero benefit. So as expected, the Landstad 1900 got rejected in military trials and it never went into production because of its horrible performance. Remember kids, just because something existed in real life, it doesn't necessarily mean it was a good idea. History is filled with all kinds of stupid ideas, such as a magazine fed revolver. But of course, the developers at CD Projekt Red saw this gun and thought, yeah, fuck it. Let's make a magazine-fed revolver because it's funny. And you know what? This gun is so bad that it's genuinely hilarious. They really went balls to the wall on this one because it has high explosive rounds too. It's stupid fun to blow people up with this thing and watch their limbs fly off. <laughs> What's even sillier is that it has a bunch of random welds. It looks like some Bubba Frankensteined this thing in their garage. 
makes sense. The AK style magazine swap is really stupid too. Like, I don't know how it's possible to knock the magazine forward like that when it's being blocked by the magwell. I suppose that you smack it so hard that it phases right through solid material. The Mattel is one humongous meme, a gigantic shitpost of a weapon. So you know what? I'll put it in S tier. At this point, I think I'll have to go ahead and rename the S tier to meme tier. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense now. No gun in this game is genuinely good enough to earn S tier. The only way they can get there is by being huge memes. Okay, time for submachine guns now. First up is the M221 Saratoga. Really, all I remember about this one is that Saratoga was the turning point of the war. But being more serious now, the Saratoga is obviously inspired by the HK UMP 45. It's almost bar for bar, it's just got a futuristic skin slapped onto it. And you know what? I do like the look they're going for. On the surface, it may seem fine, but after taking a closer look, there's definitely a few problems with this gun. The first one is the reload. For some reason, your character always racks the charging handle, even during a partial reload. So that means you would unnecessarily eject an unspent round every time you reload this gun. I don't know why the developers did this, because every other automatic gun does have proper partial reload animations. I guess the animators did this on purpose, because the HK slap is so satisfying that they wanted you to do it every single time you reloaded the gun. But unfortunately, it's not very satisfying because they managed to mess up the HK slap. You see, on the UMP and the MP5, the charging handle goes back, then up into a groove where it's then locked in place. So the way you send it forward is by slapping down. But with the Saratoga, the charging handle goes back and then down into a groove. So you would have to slap it in an upward motion to send it forward not down. And yet, your character smacks it down so hard that it defies the laws of physics and it goes forward anyway. I bet 99% of people didn't even notice this. It's honestly pretty easy to miss, but after you realize it, you will never be able to look at the Saratoga the same way ever again. This magazine manages to defy reality as well, because it somehow holds 40 rounds of 9mm, despite it being a 30 round magazine. But don't worry, the problem solver variant solves this problem by magically extending the capacity to 90 rounds, despite it being the same size as the default magazine. Besides that, the magazine seems to be a little bit wider than a 9x19 magazine, but that's probably because it's chambered in a fantasy round called 9.2mm, so we don't know exactly how long it is. If I had to take a guess, it's probably about 30 millimeters long. Perhaps these guys upgraded to a longer, high velocity version of 9mm for better armor penetration. Unfortunately though, you wouldn't be able to kill anybody with this gun, because the safety is always turned on. Whoops. I also don't know why it has to have a big plastic cover on the side of the magazine. It's not like that's supposed to be some kind of grip, because your character holds it by the vertical grip. It just seems like a useless block of plastic, which makes the gun a little bit uglier. Overall though, I don't hate this gun. It looks good on the surface, and it is fun to use in-game. I really appreciate the high fire rate, low recoil, and clean iron sights. Unfortunately though, the damage is horribly low, so it hits like a wet noodle. But that's because this game implements a hard nerf on all full-auto firearms. After installing a mod to fix the balancing, it's now very satisfying and my favorite SMG to use. As it is by default, I think a fair rating for the Saratoga is B tier. The Shigure is basically just a reskin of the Saratoga. It's got the same exact layout and the same animations. It's just a little bit uglier. It also has a problem with magazine capacity, but instead of holding 40 rounds, this 30 round magazine magically holds 50 rounds of 9mm. Now that is impressive. But hey, at the very least, the safety isn't on, so this thing would shoot. Other than that, I don't have anything else to add with the Shigure. Everything I already said with the Saratoga already applies to this one, so it gets the same placement in B tier. Yet another asset flip is the guillotine. It has the same animations as the Saratoga and the Shigure, but this one manages to be 10 times uglier, probably because it's made by our friends at Budget Arms. They gave it this bubbly plastic outer shell, which makes it look very alien. I'm not a big fan of this tiny folding wire stock either. This configuration makes no sense. They added a folding wire stock on top of a fixed stock, so now you've got a stock on top of your stock. Granted, the fixed stock isn't properly shaped, so it wouldn't be very effective in the first place. So there's two solutions here. Either you fix the fixed stock, 
or delete it entirely and then add on a proper wire stock. Besides that, this gun has the same problem where the magazine magically holds more rounds than it should. Like I said, this gun is another asset flip, so of course it carries over the same issues from the previous SMGs. Honestly, it seems really lazy to have three guns share these same exact animations, but I guess you could come up with the excuse that it's for uh, world building purposes. Like maybe the guys from Budget Arms simply copy pasted a popular design, then made it uglier and cheaper to sell it to poor people. Seems legit. But at the same time, I think it's odd how this budget SMG comes with a high-tech integrated optic. That doesn't seem very budget friendly. Like this optic would easily cost five times more than the gun itself. It would obviously make more sense if this budget SMG came with irons by default. Overall, this gun is dumb and very ugly. I do not like it, therefore I will place it in D tier. Now finally, for something that doesn't reuse assets, we have the D-51 Pulsar, which is a, an extremely bullpupped SMG. Or really, I don't think you can technically call this a submachine gun, because the size of the magazine suggests that it's shooting a rifle-length cartridge, so if anything, it should be classified as a carbine and then put in the assault rifle category instead. But if you look at the ammo in the model, it's straight-walled, and it's referred to as 10.2mm. It looks like a 10mm rip round, but much longer. So this gun is using a 40 caliber big bore rifle round, and that means it would be classified as a battle rifle. And yet, it still functions and feels like a submachine gun. The recoil and damage are very low, despite it shooting such a mean and powerful round. With a big bore rifle round like this, this thing would kick pretty hard, especially for how compact and light this gun is. Either way, it would make a lot more sense if they gave this gun a much lighter round, something like a 545 that would be much more suitable for this lightweight and compact rifle. Another big problem you may be wondering about is uh, how the hell does this thing function if there's no room for the bolt to reciprocate? Well, that's because the chamber isn't directly above the magazine, it's placed further up. You see, the Pulsar is heavily inspired by the TKB-22, which is a really obscure Soviet prototype that never went into production. The magazine is placed at the very rear end of the weapon, but the chamber is way up here, so it uses an elongated bolt to rake in ammunition and carry them to the chamber. Doing all that gives this gun the longest barrel length possible for the smallest overall package. In other words, it's a bullpup on steroids. It seems like a pretty good idea, but the TKB-22 was rejected by the Soviets because the complex design wasn't worth all the hassle. Plus, it's really fucking ugly. Its goal was to replace the AK, but you just can't beat the raw ruggedness and simplicity of the AK. When it comes to firearms, the simplest designs tend to be the most effective, logistically speaking and mechanically speaking. So that's exactly why guns like the AK are still going strong to this day. It's nearly impossible to replace, even over 75 years after it was initially created. Really, the only thing you can do is just add on new bits of furniture. Trying to over-engineer firearms just makes them more complicated to maintain and less cost-effective. So I find it pretty funny when the description says that this is a really cheap firearm, because in reality, it wouldn't be. If they wanted to have a cheap yet reliable compact rifle that would be found all over the slums of Night City, then yeah, something like an AK or a Draco would have been a much better choice. But if they still insisted on having a unique looking bullpup, then they should have made this thing function more like the Groza, which is literally just a bullpup AK. Picking a failed prototype instead is just silly. But hey, at least they acknowledge that it's a semi-failed experiment. They do have self-awareness about how dumb this design is. The description also says that the Pulsar looks like someone disassembled a machine gun, then had a blindfolded kindergartner mash it back together. Now that is pretty funny. At this point, it looks like the developers were purposely going out of their way to pick really cursed gun designs just to mess with us. And you know what? I can respect them for putting in some research. They researched some really dumb gun designs, but they did do some research nonetheless, which is leagues better than Bethesda. I can also appreciate that they took an absolutely disgusting looking gun and made it somewhat pleasing to look at. Like I surprisingly don't hate the look of the Pulsar, especially this specific variant I found which comes with gold metal and wood furniture. Low key, it's kind of baller. The choice to get rid of all Bakelite was very wise, cause god dang, that shit was ugly. It's also got a carry handle and a FAMAS style charging handle, which is odd, but honestly, it suits this gun pretty well. Now what I for sure don't like is how there's no butt plate on this stock. Or, really, I don't know if you can call this a stock, because there's not much there. But either way, the lack of a proper stock would make this gun feel really awkward to shoot, and it would also make the recoil hard to manage. Besides that, there seems to be a lot of uh, useless details going on here in the middle. But the worst part 
is that this gun has a trigger safety. Like, who the hell puts a trigger safety on an automatic rifle? Please, I beg of you, stop putting trigger safeties on everything. All around, this gun is pretty silly, and it has a bunch of boneheaded design flaws. But I will say, it is commendable how the developers managed to take a really cursed real-life firearm and make it somewhat presentable. I'm still gonna put it in C tier, though. Moving on. For the last of the SMGs, we have the Erebus. But holy hell, can you even call this an SMG? It's just a big ballistic brick. Perhaps it's better used as a blunt melee weapon. It even comes with a meat tenderizer on the front end. <laughs> But of course, you don't actually use the meat tenderizer during the melee animation. You still do a buttstock slap. The ergonomics on this brick are hilariously bad. It's not even shaped like a gun. It's just an amalgamated mass of plastic and metal. It looks like what would happen if an eldritch horror morphed into a gun. And well, that's kind of what happened here. You see, this thing is described as an affront to international humanitarian law. This gun is literally a portable war crime, not because of how ugly it is, but because it hacks people's brains with bullets. Don't ask me how that works, it's pure magic. I'm not sure exactly what the hacking does, but it must pump their brain full of horrors beyond human comprehension, because the victims scream in pure agony while being mowed down, as if the bullets didn't already hurt enough. To make it even scarier, this gun is possessed by an AI, and it talks to you while you're going on a killing spree. It's also watching your every move with that eyeball on the top of the gun. And since the eyeball is in that spot, they move the iron sights to the side, so you're using canted backup irons as your main sights. Which is kind of silly, because this sighting system is very basic and not very accurate. Like, come on, you could have put the eyeball somewhere else, and I was expecting this high-tech gun to come with a high-tech scope to match. But I guess accuracy doesn't matter, because this thing acts like a shotgun. It shoots out multiple projectiles at once, and has a very wide spread. So I guess this should be classified as a shotgun, but it still uses pistol ammunition, so perhaps the gun cuts up the bullets before they leave the barrel. I don't know, man. This gun makes no sense. And I don't see a reason for me to try and make any sense out of it, because it's complete sci-fi nonsense. Not much thought was put into this design, it's just a big meme, and I get the joke, but still, I ain't laughing. F tier. Moving on to the shotguns now, let's start with a good old double barrel. The DB4 Igla, it's called. It looks exactly like something you would see in real life. There's no crazy future stuff going on here. The only modern thing about this gun is the polymer furniture. I do think it's odd how they didn't bother to give this thing any sights though. It's just a ridge along the center of the gun, which is indeed a common feature, or a lack of a feature, that you'll see on a lot of double barrels. They don't always have sights, but I was hoping they would give this one, uh, something. You know, this is the future after all, but perhaps this is a really old model. In that case, I have no problem with it. So, the model itself is basically perfect. The real beef I have with this gun is its performance, because it falls victim to classic video game shotgun syndrome, meaning it has a comically wide spread, and it's completely useless beyond, like, 25 yards. I mean, you can do damage at range, but it'll take a while to kill anything. So, this thing can really only be used at point-blank range. And even then, it's not that great to use in close quarters, because you basically have to shove the barrel down their throat to get a one-shot kill. It's a really weird case of cognitive dissonance, because the shotguns are depicted as being so powerful that they can blow people off their feet, and yet, the actual damage they deal is rather pathetic. This goes for every shotgun in the game, too. They all fall victim to the same cliché, which is genuinely annoying. I am sick and tired of games depicting shotguns this way. It's not realistic, it's unoriginal, and most importantly, it's not very fun to use them in-game. This tired cliché mostly makes shotguns into niche gimmick weapons, but they're so gimmicky that they're not even good in their own gimmick because they are outclassed by melee weapons. In this case, you are indeed better off bringing a knife to a shotgun fight. <laughs> you see, in reality, shotguns can be very lethal up to 50 yards, especially with a long barrel and a choke, because shotgun spread in reality is not nearly this wide. At 25 yards, you can easily get most of your pellets on target, and at 50, you can still get about half of them. But in Cyberpunk, the spread is so wide that the pellets effectively disappear into the void at longer ranges. I'm guessing most games do this to make shotguns easier for noobs to use, but really, it ends up making them way too gimmicky and generally useless. Like I said, the visual design of this shotgun is basically perfect, it's just the performance in-game that I hate. The highest rating I can give to the Igla is A tier, and it could very easily get an S tier if they simply reduced the spread and gave it realistic damage. 
The DB2 Testera is basically the same thing as the Igla, it's just a reskin with a cut barrel and some different attachments. I'm not really a big fan of the attachments, they just look tacky, especially the big knuckle guard. It's also kind of dumb how they remove the ridge entirely, so you have zero point of reference whatsoever. But hey, you don't need to aim because it's a shotgun, am I right? But seriously, this is obviously a futuristic shotgun, so at least give it something to aim with. Now what makes this shotgun functionally different from the Igla is that it shoots both barrels at once, which is a neat little thing you can do on shotguns that have two triggers. You see, a lot of older double barrels have one trigger for each barrel, and if you pull both triggers at once, then both barrels go boom. This shotgun doesn't have two triggers though, it's just one, so I can only assume it's designed to shoot both barrels every single time, and that's exactly how it plays out in game. You always shoot both barrels, there is no option to shoot just one. That doesn't seem very convenient or user friendly. Having to deal with double the recoil on every single shot would wear out your shoulder pretty quick, but hey, if you're cybernetically enhanced, then I suppose it's not an issue. Either way, I think it would have been a lot cooler if they gave this shotgun two triggers so you could choose to fire one barrel or two depending on the situation. I do like the concept here. Shooting both barrels at once means you would do double the damage. So this gun should be an absolute monster, but in game it's kind of pathetic and it has the same range as a melee weapon. Again, this could easily be fixed with mods, but as it is, I'll have to give the testicle a B tier because it's a little bit uglier than the Igla. Next we got a good old pump shotgun. The M2038 Tactician. It's very reminiscent of typical pump shotguns like a Mossberg or a Remington, but you know, with a futuristic skin on it. Overall, it looks okay, but I don't like how it has a fixed stock with an adjustable portion added on top of it. It looks out of place and uh, really flimsy too. It would be a lot more fitting if they gave it a normal adjustable stock, like what you see on most tactical shotguns. I also hate the fact that they put a trigger safety on a shotgun. Like bro, who the hell keeps doing this? Who keeps putting trigger safeties where they don't belong? Fire that man. Immediately. Another quirk with this shotgun is that it's ambidextrous. It has an ejection port on both sides, so you would be able to switch which side the shells eject from depending on your handedness. Normally, this is a feature you would see on a bullpup. It's not really necessary on a traditional style shotgun, but hey, I'm glad to see they are making accommodations for disabled people in the future. The choice for long gutter sights though is kind of lame. I mean, sure, it works, but like I said before, these guns are supposed to be futuristic, so they should be built with optics and advanced sighting systems in mind. What's also pretty lame is how slow the reload is. Of course, this slow methodical reload animation is very realistic. If you're an absolute noob shooting on a closed range, it feels really goofy having my character reload this shotgun at a snail's pace while being shot at. Like come on, pick up the pace please, this is a life or death situation. Not only that, but this animation feels extremely out of place when your character reloads every other gun like they're an expert. I'm not saying that they should simply speed up the reload like you just chugged a speed cola. No. Of course not, that would just be lazy. Instead, they should make your character quad load their shotguns like John Wick. That would be a lot cooler and much more satisfying. Plus, it would make this shotgun much more useful in game. Well, it still kind of sucks because it falls victim to video game shotgun syndrome, but you know what I mean. Another thing I noticed about this shotgun is that it holds 8 rounds, and yet it has a 6 round magazine tube. And no, this gun is not using shorter shells, they are full size. They did get it right with the Headsman variant though, it holds 6 rounds. It's also functionally unique because it shoots slugs instead of buckshot. I do find it very disappointing that you can't use slugs on the regular variants. This is the only shotgun that uses slugs, but you should be able to swap out the ammunition whenever you feel like it. Like I mentioned before, this game's ammunition system is on the same level as Fortnite, so they don't have any specific ammo types. Everything is just one jumbled mass, and the ammo depends on the gun itself. It's also kind of dumb how they force you to use this gun without a stock. You have to use it as is. The whole point of putting slugs in a shotgun is to extend your lethal range and increase accuracy. A stock provides a third point of contact which increases your accuracy and recoil control. So this is just an extremely counterintuitive combo. By all means, you can do this. There's nothing stopping you. It's just not a very meta build. Like come on, this gun is literally called the Headsman and it deals extra headshot damage, and yet it's not properly built for getting headshots. Normally, I would expect a slug shotgun to come with a stock, an extended barrel, and a scope, while the buckshot variant would be shorter and more suited for close quarters. There's quite a few big goofs with the tactician, but I don't hate it. I think it's okay, so I'll put it in B tier. At the very least, they made the pump animation go in the right direction, and they do have a working bullet counted reload, one that isn't bugged as hell, so that's 10 times better than Bethesda. 
The Crusher is another somewhat typical looking shotgun, but this one is semi-automatic and magazine fed. On the surface, it doesn't look too bad, and I can appreciate the aesthetic they're going for, but there's definitely some tomfoolery going on here. First thing I noticed is that this tiny magazine holds 12 rounds of 12 gauge, when it's actually a 6 round magazine. A real 12 round 12 gauge magazine would be twice as big. Man, these guys are really having a tough time with basic geometry. They also forgot to make this shotgun eject any shotgun shells, so perhaps that means you shoot the whole thing out the barrel. Either that, or it's secretly a caseless 12 gauge shotgun shell. Or, you know, maybe the developers just plain forgot, and didn't check because they rushed the shit out of this game. You'd think they would at least double check and correct simple mistakes like this with the 2.0 update, but I guess nobody ever noticed it. Well, I noticed it, and now I'm sharing it with the whole world. So if they don't fix this in the next update, then I will uninstall and request a refund. It's also disappointing how you can't modify this shotgun. It's forever stuck with no stock and a short barrel, so if I don't give the government $200, then Militech will raid my house and shoot my cyberdoc, and then say it was a cyber psycho incident. But seriously, please, give me the option to modify my shotguns. I don't want to be stuck with this little chode. Also, the fact that your character holds it like a pistol in third person is pretty funny. You either gotta be a level 100 doofus or an absolute gigachad to hold a shotgun like that. What's especially debilitating about this design is how the recoil spring isn't attached to anything. It's a, uh, free-floating recoil spring. So, no, this whole gun would not work. And even if it did, it's not a great idea to have a big hole in the gun like that. It would make the gun prone to jamming because dirt could easily get in there. So there's quite a few big goofs with this shotgun. It's not terrible, but it's not that great either. The Crusher goes in C tier. Next is the VST-37 Posar, which is another compact automatic shotgun. A uh, fully automatic one at that. This thing is so similar to the Crusher that it has these same issues. There's uh, no shell casings, and the magazine capacity is wrong. It also manages to hold 12 rounds, despite it being an 8-round magazine. You can't modify it either. It's always stuck in the same chode configuration. It's probably not the best idea to have a full auto shotgun with no stock. Like, holy moly, this would be a tough baby to handle. But hey, if you're a real cyber chat, then it shouldn't be a problem. The overall design here looks okay, but the big fat carry handle absolutely ruins the profile of this gun. I can appreciate that they finally gave a futuristic gun a futuristic integrated sight, but they didn't need to make it a whole carry handle. I'm also surprised they did this on a shotgun of all things, because you don't need to aim with the shotguns in this game due to how comically wide their spread is. But yeah, the big carry handle looks completely out of place. It looks like they ripped it straight from the Starship Troopers gun, then just welded it onto this thing. Literally, because they did indeed weld that shit on there. I swear, what's with all these Slavic guns having welds on them? Is this the preferred method for Slavic gunsmiths? I don't know, man. Their methods are simply beyond our comprehension. What I find even more intriguing is that the whole bolt assembly of this shotgun is based on the Shogun Inertia, which again, is a rather obscure firearm from the early 1900s. I don't know why these guys are obsessed with basing their gun designs off firearms from the early 1900s when their game is based on a 1980s retro-futuristic aesthetic. There are quite a few decades off here, Actually, about 177 years. It's also not a great idea to pair this bolt design with a compact, stockless shotgun. Your character holds it right up to their face, and it looks like the bolt is smacking them in the nose every time they shoot. Like I said earlier, it seems they're purposely picking out really obscure designs solely for the sake of being unique, without considering whether or not those designs fit into the setting. Stuff like this would work much better in a steampunk game, not a cyberpunk game. Don't get me wrong, the Shogun is cool, but this design doesn't make sense in 2077, especially since this gun is made by a Slavic company, but the Shogrin is a Swedish design. Obviously, a much more suitable gun to take inspiration from would be the Sega 12. And in some way, it does look like they started out with the Sega, but then they butchered it with a bunch of random bullshit. They even gave it an AK-style reload, despite it not having an AK-style paddle mag release. Like, come on, this was obviously meant to be a futuristic Sega. All around, this gun is pretty stinky, but at the very least, it is fun to mindlessly run around and spam this full auto shoddy. It also sounds really good, and the animations are satisfying. I'll meet in the middle and put the poser in C tier. For the last and most epic shotgun of them all, we have the Carnage, which is made by our lovely friends at Budget Arms. In classic Budget Arms fashion, it's pretty damn ugly, and again, it has a weirdly shaped stock, along with a useless folding wire stock added on top of it. They definitely need to delete that part and replace it with a proper butt plate, because this thing kicks like a mule. 
You see, the Carnage is an absolute monster chambered in 4 gauge, which is like 4 times bigger and more powerful than a 12 gauge. Cyberpunk really displays just how ridiculous the recoil is on a 4 gauge. A, uh, a bit too ridiculous though, because it recoils straight into your eye socket. Don't get me wrong, 4 gauge is very powerful and it kicks hard, but the recoil is not this dramatic. It's not quite enough to have the stock phase right through your shoulder. But if you thought the recoil on the Carnage was overly dramatic, then oh boy, take a look at the Guts variant. It's so damn powerful that it almost rips the spine straight out of your body. This thing got straight up Looney Tunes recoil. Obviously, this goofy spine-stretching animation isn't intended by the developers, because this game does not have any official third-person support. I'm using a mod here, which is why it looks so buggy. I just wanted to show this because, uh, it's pretty fucking funny. But even in first person, the recoil is so absurdly high that it throws your whole body backwards and the, the gun almost flies out of your hands. I'm not sure why the recoil has to be so much higher on this one when it's chambered in the same round. So maybe it's using custom loads that are packed to the brim with uh, extra recoil powder. The bottom line is, you've got to be an absolute giga chat to wield a gun this unwieldy. So it's genuinely insane how Rebecca from Edge Runners is able to use this in one hand, and the gun doesn't even recoil when she's using it. She is simply too powerful. So powerful, in fact, that she can force these pump shotguns to shoot in semi-auto. Now that is some advanced skill. All around, this gun is pretty ridiculous and very ugly, but it is stupid fun to use in-game. The only thing holding it back is video game shotgun syndrome, but even then, it's still fun to blow people off their feet. The Carnage is a gigantic meme, and in this case, I do think it's very funny. It definitely deserves a spot at the top of meme tier. Moving on to the assault rifles now, let's start with the M251S Ajax. Right off the bat, this thing looks uh, kind of goofy. The proportions are quite comical, and it's uh, very front heavy. It looks like someone mashed together an AR-15, an AK, and an XM8, because uh, that's exactly what they did. It has the receiver, pistol grip, stock, and charging handle from an AR, while the gas system and the magazine are from an AK, and uh, for some reason, it has an XM8 handguard. I can totally get down with a mutant AR, but the execution on this gun specifically isn't that great. This gun would have worked a lot better if they made it more similar to the Mark 47 Mutant, not whatever the hell this abomination is. What's also pretty funny about this Mutant build is that it has a traditional AR charging handle, plus a side charging handle. So you have two charging handles, and they're ambidextrous, so essentially, you have four charging handles on this gun, which is a whole lot of charging handles. Obviously, this is unnecessary, but it is something seen on the new XM7 rifle. Originally, it started out with only a side charging handle, but in early testing, soldiers complained about the placement of the charging handle because uh, they were so used to operating their M4s and M16s. So Sig Sauer said fine, we'll give you both. More importantly, I'm worried about the magazine, because god dang, that is quite an excessive angle, and it doesn't look like the rounds are horizontal before being loaded into the chamber. So, no, this magazine doesn't look like it would feed. The magazine itself looks far too curved as well. I mean, this would be an appropriate curve for a 7.62x39 AK magazine, but the raw size of this thing suggests that it's shooting a full-length rifle round, such as 7.62x51 also known as 308, and uh, real 30 round 308 magazines are not nearly this curved. So that makes me think that the developers mixed up the two 762 rounds. Remember kids, 762 is completely different from 762. But as it turns out, it's not chambered in 762 or 762, because the receiver says that it's chambered in 556. Like, come on, there is no way this huge magazine is holding 556. This seems like a classic boneheaded mistake. I think whoever modeled this gun was simply looking at an AR receiver and they copied all the engravings without knowing what they mean. There was definitely a big miscommunication here because if you look at the ammunition in the model, well, uh, firstly, it's not fully modeled. It's just a gray placeholder, which is kind of odd because pretty much every other gun in this game does have fully modeled ammunition. But yeah, if you look at this ammunition, it it looks like a 40 caliber big bore rifle round, kind of like what we saw earlier with the Pulsar. This one is just uh, even longer. So again, this is not an assault rifle, it's actually a battle rifle. And despite it shooting a full-size battle rifle round, the recoil is very soft and controllable in full auto. It feels more like a 7.62x39, which is what it should have been chambered for from the start. Like I said, this gun should have been more like a Mark 47 Mutant, but this gun has been mutated beyond recognition, and it's filled with all kinds of convoluted characteristics. 
I can appreciate that they gave it an integrated sight and laser, but again, the laser doesn't work. I also don't like this big chunky rail system. It doesn't need to be that bulky and placed that high up. So overall, this gun is honestly pretty bad. It's a mutated abomination that deserves to be euthanized. Visually, I don't hate it that much. It is a little ugly, but there is uh, some style to it at the same time, if that makes sense. And at the very least, it is fun to use in game, so I'll put the Ajax in C tier. The Kyubi is essentially a reskin of the Ajax, or uh, maybe it's vice versa, I don't know. There's a lot of reskins in this game. Either way, it's got the same layout and the same animations as the Ajax, but it manages to be even uglier. The big bubbly handguard especially kind of ruins the whole design. The main difference here is that the QB is semi-automatic and it's chambered in 5.56, or uh, maybe 5.45. I don't know exactly, because there is no ammunition in the model, it's completely empty. Either way, it would most likely be some type of intermediate 5mm rifle round. Another problem with the magazine is that it's entirely too long, because it says that it holds 20 rounds, despite it being a 30 round magazine. Either that, or the damn Californians put a limiter in there. I find it very odd that between these two rifles, the uh, QB is the semi-automatic one, while the Ajax is full auto. If anything, I was expecting the intermediate rifle to be full auto, while the battle rifle would be semi-auto. Or really, they would both be select fire in real life, and you would be able to switch on command by using the fire selector. But this game doesn't have a fire selector mechanic. You're stuck with whatever mode the developers programmed it to be in. Either way, I don't like the decision to neuter this gun and make it semi-auto only, because it kinda sucks and it feels really clunky. Also, the recoil animation looks extremely stiff. It looks like they ported that shit straight from a Bethesda game, it's so bad. Another big goof is the muzzle brake. Not only is it closed off, but the hole in the middle isn't in line with the bore, so the bullets wouldn't be able to leave, and your gun would blow up. The only thing I can appreciate about this gun is the futuristic hologram sight. That shit looks pretty dope. I would very much like to see more sights like this in Cyberpunk. As for the rest of the gun, uh, no thank you. The QB is on the same level as the Ajax, so I say this one belongs in C tier as well. Now finally, for the first actual assault rifle, we have the D5 Copperhead, which is fully automatic, and it's for sure chambered in 5.56. But uh, the engraving on the receiver got cut off, so it just says 5.5, but it also says caliber 223. So yes, this is a 5.56 rifle, and it can use both rounds. I can't really determine what gun this takes inspiration from, it just looks like a generic future gun.png. And like most futuristic sci-fi guns, there's a bunch of nonsense going on here. The first thing is the magazine. Why is it angled like that? This is supposed to be shooting 5.56, but the magazine is not shaped like a 5.56 magazine. You see, magazines are shaped in a specific way because it's the most effective shape to feed the rounds properly. Plus, it eliminates any unnecessary empty space between the rounds, meaning it's very space effective as well. Meanwhile, this wildly angled magazine doesn't look like it would be able to feed 5.56 properly, nor is it very effective in terms of space management. Also, the magazine itself looks to be a few millimeters too short. Like, I don't think it could support the length of a 5.56, but maybe it's just the angle throwing me off here. Either way, this magazine certainly ain't holding 50 rounds. It would be 30 at most. And while the magazine is too small, the ejection port is way too big. Probably the worst part is how the iron sights are uh, attached to like a, a hinge or something. I don't know what you'd call it. It looks like a bunch of moving part nonsense, and it would lose zero quicker than a $20 Amazon red dot. The only thing I like about this gun is the high fire rate and low recoil. It feels really good to shoot, but the super low damage makes it as lethal as a wet napkin. Apparently, the low low recoil is thanks to a, an anti-recoil device as it says. I'm not sure how this works, but I'll trust that it's legit. Another funny label I saw is, uh, read manual before use. Like, come on, who puts warning labels on their guns? Okay, I know some guns have this, but the bright yellow sticker makes it seem like a toy. Plus, nobody reads manuals anymore. That shit is lame. And besides, everyone already knows that the first rule of gun safety is to have fun. But seriously, why are manuals still around in the future? Why can't I just have this information beamed into my head like it's the Matrix? I know kung fu. Overall, the Copperhead is pretty mid, so it gets a mid rating in C tier. The Umbra is basically the same thing as the Copperhead, just much uglier. It looks like they straight up cast molded this thing, because I can see a gun trapped inside an outer shell of sheet metal. But what's even goofier about this design is that the buffer tube sticks out, but the stock isn't attached to the buffer tube. Instead, it wraps around it and it connects to the pistol grip and the upper receiver. What a glorious roundabout way to attach a stock. 
And for the icing on the cake, it has a trigger straight from a water gun. Plus, it has no trigger guard whatsoever. There is not much else I can add with the Umbra. It's just another reskin, so everything I already said about the Copperhead applies to this one too. But the Umbra is even worse. It is butt ugly, so it belongs in D tier. Next up is the Masamune, which is a 3 round burst assault rifle. It mostly reminds me of the FAMAS, albeit a little bit bulkier and more futuristic looking. And hey, unlike the FAMAS, it has a magazine capacity divisible by 3, which is genius. Functionally, it is very similar, uh, besides the fact that it isn't a bullpup, and yet it's still shaped like a bullpup. If not bullpup, then why bullpup shaped? It doesn't make any sense. I can't believe I'm saying it, but yes, this gun would be much better off as a bullpup. Otherwise, it just looks like one of those cursed images of a non bullpup bullpup. It's uncanny. Other than that one big caveat, I do like the overall aesthetic. It's got great style. The only other flaw I noticed with the gun itself is that the charging handle goes way too far back. Like, holy moly, that's gotta be three times further than it needs to go. But what's especially horrendous is the reticle. The optic itself is fine, but the reticle is a big open circle, so you can't really make precise shots at range, which is a very counterintuitive design because a burst rifle like this is meant for medium to long range, but a reticle like this is obviously meant for close quarter engagements. But even then, there is no reason to choose a big open circle over a regular dot. It's less accurate either way. That's pretty much all I can say about the Masamune. Like I said, I do really like what they were going for, and they were so close to greatness. If they would have made it a true bullpup and give it a proper reticle, then it would be perfect. For now, I'll have to put it in B tier. For yet another reskin, we have the Nowaki. Or maybe the Nowaki came first and the Masamune second. I don't really care. When it comes to the guns that share the same animations, I'm putting the cooler one first. But yeah, this is essentially the same gun as the Masamune, just a little bit uglier. Frankly, I'm tired of covering these reskins in depth. I would much rather move on to stuff that's entirely unique. So I'll put this one in C tier and call it a day. Now finally, it's time for my favorite category, the machine guns. First up is a light machine gun called the Defender. And, uh, well, the first problem here is that this light machine gun ain't so light. It's fucking huge. Calling this gun a light machine gun is like calling Queso a skinny legend, cause god dang, it's actually comically obese. It looks like it weighs about 50 or 60 pounds, which is more than double than what it should be. It doesn't even resemble a firearm in the slightest. It looks more like a muffler, or maybe a catalytic converter. And from this angle, it kind of looks like a cruise ship, perhaps even an airship. Dare I say, this abomination is even uglier than the Fallout 4 assault rifle. The only part I could distinguish was the Scar H inspired stock. Uh, that's about it. Everything else is random bullshit. I also don't like how the trigger is on the side of the gun, instead of, uh, you know, being in the normal spot. Like, literally every other gun ever made. Well, all besides the PAW 20mm grenade launcher, that is. This might be the only gun, or grenade launcher, to have this feature. And it is kind of interesting, but also really cursed. Apparently, the reason for placing the trigger on the side like this is to reduce the overall length of the gun without sacrificing any barrel length. So basically, it's like a bullpup without being a bullpup. Because instead of placing the trigger group in front of the magazine, you place it next to it. It's freaking genius. But in all seriousness, I don't see an advantage in this design over a normal bullpup. All you're doing here is making it hell for lefties to use, because they have to flip the gun upside down to use it. I can't say I like it too much, and it's not really helping that much in the case of the Defender, because this gun is comically oversized. According to the description, they use this specific trigger design to make it more convenient to shoot while in the prone position, but that doesn't make any sense because the prone position does not exist in the cyberpunk universe. Seriously, you can't go prone in this game. So what's the point in making a machine gun that is designed to be used from the prone position if you can't even go prone? It's completely pointless. It's not like this trigger design is very beneficial for a machine gun in the prone position anyway. A traditional pistol grip works just fine, and if you're gonna make a machine gun specialized for use in the prone position, then uh, you might not want to place the magazine at the very bottom of the weapon. Because, you know, you can't reload the magazine if the ground is in the way. Placing the magazine on top is much more convenient, and that's exactly why many real historical machine guns have top-fed magazines. The Defender also has a big bipod that you can't use, because there is no mounting or bipod mechanic in this game. 
But hey, at the very least, the bipod does have jiggle physics, so that's cool. So really, your only option is to run and gun with this giant hunk of steel. But it's not very good at doing so because the damage is pretty dang low, and the recoil is extremely high and visceral. It's acting like you're shooting some massive beefy 50 cal, when in reality, it's just a 6.5mm, which is plenty powerful, but it surely ain't this dramatic. Especially with how heavy this gun is, the recoil impulse would be pretty smooth. To make it even more confusing, the barrel and the bore look to be suited for a 20mm projectile, but like I said, it's shooting a 6.5mm rifle round. Uh, it seems the developers may have copied a few too many parts from the PA 20mm. The rounds themselves are also kind of weird because the entire bullet is blue like a nerf dart. Of course, blue tip rounds are a thing, it means that the rounds are incendiary, but you don't make the whole bullet blue, it's just the tip. Hence why it's called a blue tip, not a blue bullet. These rounds ain't even incendiary, so I don't know why they made them blue in the first place. Probably because it matches their nails or something. To make it even weirder, the box mag has been replaced by a big helical magazine instead. Almost like a PP-19, but it's belt-fed. I'm not really a big fan of this design, especially since it's a belt-fed machine gun. Having to wrap the links around in a helical, spiral-like pattern would uh, be a lot more complicated than just laying it down in a traditional-style nutsack. Plus, this magazine is all metal, which makes it unnecessarily heavy when compared to a nutsack. And yes, they are officially called nutsacks. Even worse, this gigantic metal pipe only holds 80 rounds, when something of this size should easily hold 200. From every angle, this magazine is absolute dog shit. It's heavy, unnecessarily complicated, and not very space effective either, it seems. But the worst part is, the ammo belt isn't animated properly. When you completely chew through it, and there's no ammo left, there's uh, still visually rounds in the belt. But obviously, that shouldn't be possible, because there's no ammo left. It's also disappointing how you can't see the links being spit out from the other side. I'm guessing the animators didn't even bother to animate it because this gun is so fat that you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. And while you can't see the links, you can see the casings coming out from near the barrel, which is uh, quite odd. I'm uh, not sure how this would work. Maybe it has some kind of magic mechanism like the F2000. And where are the links going if the casings are being ejected way up there? Would they still be ejected from the side? Well, no. They aren't being ejected from anywhere, because if you look at the right side of this gun, there is no ejection port whatsoever, because, you know, the stupid side trigger is in the way. These casings are just flying straight out from the barrel, it seems. Now, what they did bother to animate is an automatic belt feeder thingy, so you don't have to manually load the belt into the feed tray. The gun does it by itself. It does look kind of cool, and I guess this kind of suits the whole futuristic theme, but honestly, this seems like another shortcut by the animators. They didn't want to show the delicate, glorious process of reloading a machine gun, so they made it as simple as possible. But either way, an automatic moving part like this would only make the gun more complicated and more prone to failure. All around, this gun is truly an abomination, and it is by far the worst machine gun I have ever seen in a video game. It has no redeeming qualities. Well, besides the jiggle physics on the bipod, but that's literally it. They managed to screw up every single aspect of this gun, and that genuinely makes me mad, because machine guns are always my favorite guns to use. The fact that they would dare disgrace us with this mutated abomination is just insulting. This gun is so bad that it's going lower than F tier. It's going into the forbidden Fallout 4 assault rifle tier. Actually, no. It's much worse than that. It belongs in the Abyss tier, because it's even worse than the Fallout 4 assault rifle, which is quite the accomplishment. Sheesh, I hope I never have to see that ugly thing ever again. Hopefully this next machine gun isn't- No, oh, I fucking hate this game. Yep, this one is a reskin of the Defender, and it's called the MA-70HB. I'm not sure if this one is better or worse, but either way, it's mega cursed. Again, this one is just an amalgamation of random bullshit. I can see a PKM carry handle and a uh, 249 paratrooper style stock. It's also got a fat 50 caliber muzzle brake, so uh, that's cool. I guess this gun is somewhat fun to use in game because it's using high explosive rounds, but uh, I just can't bring myself to use it. It is way too cursed. There's not much else I can add about the MA-70 specifically. Same shit, different gun. This one goes in the abyss tier as well. Now if you thought those light machine guns were extremely heavy and comically oversized, then oh boy, take a look at the Mark 31. This shit looks like it got ripped straight from a transformer it's so big. Well, normally, this is a mounted only weapon. You aren't uh, supposed to carry it around and use it on foot, but as the description mentions, that isn't stopping any cyber chats from doing so. 
Still though, its extreme weight severely hinders your movement, and you can't shoulder the weapon to aim either. Which makes perfect sense. This is quite a heavy weapon after all. So I can really appreciate that they properly characterize this gun as a true heavy machine gun. Because most video games would just make it to where you can sprint and jump around all willy nilly. It kind of sucks that you can't reload this thing. You always have to toss it out when you're done. But again, that does make sense because it's using a minigun style feeding system. And uh, that shit would take way too long to reload. Besides, switching to your backup machine gun is faster than reloading. The ammunition is very interesting though. Again, the whole bullet is blue, but what I'm more focused on this time is that it's using straight-walled ammunition. At first I thought this gun would be shooting 50 BMG, but it looks more like a pointy version of 50 Beowulf. I mean, sure, I guess you can do that, but it kind of defeats the whole purpose of this being a heavy machine gun, because heavy machine guns are supposed to be powerful enough to disable light vehicles, and uh, also turn people into little pieces too. Well, in-game, this gun is quite effective in taking out vehicles. It can blow them up pretty quick and it is very fun to do so. But this neutered version of 50 BMG wouldn't actually be this effective. At the same time, its effectiveness on human targets isn't that great. These guys should all be dying in one or two hits at most. But again, this nonsensical balancing is a problem with the game as a whole. It's also kind of silly just how slow the projectiles are. It looks like these bullets are traveling slower than an airsoft BB. I also think that this is the only power gun in the entire game that uses projectiles. Everything else uses hitscan, but this one is special, so it actually does shoot bullets out the barrel. It's also the only gun that has an overheating mechanic, and uh, it overheats after about 40 rounds of rapid fire, which is pretty damn quick. The quick overheating makes even less sense because, uh, you know, it has a big ass cooling system, so it seems that the cooling system isn't doing its job very well. I don't know how this cooling system would work anyway, because it's not surrounding the barrel. You see, on water-cooled machine guns, the barrel sits inside of a big water jacket, so the whole barrel is surrounded by cool water, and uh, when the barrel heats up, the water converts into steam, but the steam is then recycled back into water by a condenser. So the barrel is pretty much always cooled, as long as you make sure that you don't burn up all your water. But with this design, the cooling system is completely separated from the barrel, so I don't know how it's cooling down the barrel. Perhaps it pumps the liquid straight down the bore. Either way, it's not actively cooling down the barrel. It only activates once the barrel overheats, which uh, isn't a very smart idea, because that means you're purposely allowing the barrel to overheat, which damages the barrel. So after a few hundred rounds, you would have to replace the barrel, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of this being a water-cooled machine gun. Like, you might as well make it a regular air-cooled design then. Or maybe it's not water-cooled at all. Perhaps it's using liquid nitrogen, or some kind of cold gas. I don't know, it just seems like a bunch of baloney to me. So as a whole, this gun is pretty disastrous. I was gonna be nice and put it in F tier, because it looks like they tried, but the fact that they referred to the belt as a clip is what pushed me over the edge. That is an unforgivable sin. The Mark 31 belongs in the forbidden Fallout 4 assault rifle tier. Jeez Louise, the machine guns were pretty terrible. Uh, let's move on to the snipers and DMRs now. First up is the SOR-22. And already, at first glance, this gun looks terrible. It is way too bulky and angular. It looks like brutalist architecture, but in gun form. It has really sharp edges all around, so it looks like you would cut yourself just trying to pick up the damn thing. But really, the biggest problem with this gun is that it's completely non-functional. The magazine is inserted at an awkward angle, and it doesn't feed directly into the chamber. Because there is no chamber. There is no bolt either. In the model, the barrel just continues throughout the whole length of the gun, and on the other side, there's a big gaping hole, making it a prime design for jamming, uh, provided that it would work. So already, this gun is a complete failure. It is easily the laziest design in the whole game. They didn't even try to make this gun functional. Like at least with some of the other cursed guns, they're based on weird historical prototypes, so while they may be really impractical, they could still be functional. This one, though, is just a complete dud. A total failure to achieve the most basic function of a firearm, the ability to go boom. So, I don't need to examine this gun any further. It's already doomed to an eternity in the fart tier. <laughs> Next up is the Kolak, which uh, really isn't a sniper or a DMR, because it's a 20mm anti-material rifle, and uh, 20mm is not typically used for sniping people at long range. They're used for taking out vehicles. I mean, you could certainly snipe people with it too, but it's beyond overkill. 
But in the world of cyberpunk, I suppose 20mm is used as an anti-cyberpsycho gun instead of an anti-tank gun. So you know what? That does make sense. Well, it would make sense if the balancing in this game wasn't so terrible. People eat 20mm like it's nothing. So besides that, I do like the overall design here. It almost looks like they took an SVU and then scaled it up. So it's nothing too crazy or alien looking. And the rugged industrial aesthetic is pretty cool. It's another Slavic firearm though, so these mad lads welded it together. They also gave it a big knuckle guard, plus a trigger guard for extra safety of course. But really, the knuckle guard could be deleted and nothing of value would be lost. Really, the main issue with this gun is that it has a rather short barrel for being chambered in 20mm. For comparison, here's what a 50 cal looks like in comparison to a 20mm. Yeah, these guns are huge. Of course, the Kolak is a bullpup, so the overall package will be shorter than a normal 20mm rifle. But either way, this barrel is way too short. It needs to be at least a whole foot longer. You see, when it comes to snipers, or uh, anti-material rifles, or really any long-range rifle with a big round, you need a long barrel to maximize its effective range. A longer barrel increases range and velocity, while a shorter barrel does the opposite. The only reason why you want to cut down a barrel is to make it lighter and more maneuverable in close quarters. And well, it's not like you would be using this giant tank cannon to clear out buildings. Unless, of course, you're an absolute cyber chad. Well actually, I do think this thing is meant to be used at close range, because there is no option for optics or any long range scopes. You're stuck with just the iron sights. Running around and shooting people point blank with a 20mm is uh, obviously very ridiculous, and nobody would ever actually do this, unless they're so chromed up that they've lost their mind. I can't really bring myself to hate this gun though, it's honestly kind of based. And one thing is for certain, it's a certified cyber chat only gun. Still though, it should come with a scope and a long barrel by default. But hey, if you want to modify it, then sure, go ahead. I've got mixed feelings on the Kolak, so I think I'll put this one in C tier. Next up is the SP32 Grad, which is another 20mm anti-material rifle. I really like the overall aesthetic they're going for here. It looks like a lot of anti-tank rifles you would see from World War II, and uh, that's because this gun is inspired by the SS-41 which is a pretty wacky design. Well, first off, it's a bullpup, but not any normal bullpup, because there is no room in the back for the bolt to reciprocate. So here's the trick. It doesn't have a bolt that reciprocates. You see, unlike every other bolt-action rifle ever made, the bolt goes forwards instead of backwards. Or really, it's not a bolt-action at all, because you aren't pushing a bolt forward, you're pushing the barrel forward instead. So I guess this is a, uh, a barrel action rifle, not a bolt action. Pretty wacky, I know, but it does work. This time around, I don't necessarily hate that the SPT-32 is based on a non-traditional design because it's fairly simple and reliable. It also makes sense considering that this is a Slavic gun and it's supposed to be really cheap. So really, this gun ain't too terrible after all. I quite like it. Well, besides its horrible performance, Again, this 20mm is extremely underpowered. It's about as lethal as a 22. I also don't like how it's missing a trigger guard, but this is just a cyberpunk classic at this point. And again, the barrel is way too short for a 20mm. I can't say I like the scope either. It's shaped like a pair of VR goggles. I should try putting it right up to my face to get the most immersive experience possible. Overall, this gun design is fairly solid. Well, besides the laughably low damage, but stuff like that can always be easily fixed. But for now, I'll have to put the SP-32 in B tier. For the very last gun on the list, we have the Osprey. This one is very obviously inspired by the M82A2, which is a very special variant of the Barrett that is designed to be shot over the shoulder. It's kind of weird, I know, but the idea here is to have an anti-material rifle that can be easily shot and maneuvered while standing. Because uh, normally, a Barrett 50 cal is way too heavy to be consistently fired from the shoulder. You can certainly do it if you're an absolute unit, but even then, it is way too exhausting to do for extended periods of time. So if you take that weight and then rest it on your shoulder, then it isn't quite as cumbersome. It's a pretty cool concept, honestly. But sadly, only 10 of these guns were ever made, because it turned out to be uh, really impractical and not very necessary. But hey, in the world of cyberpunk, I suppose this shoulder-fired anti-material rifle would be quite useful against heavily chromed cyberpsychos, because uh, cyberpsychos are made of materials after all. They even made it come with high explosive rounds, so it can rip people into little pieces. That's pretty brutal. Probably the weirdest thing about this gun is that it shoots in a three round burst while aiming down sights, but it shoots a single round while shooting from the hip. I'm not sure how this works. 
Maybe it's just your character flipping the fire selector every time they aim. Or maybe it's a smart gun that knows when to swap to burst when you're aiming. But either way, having a three round burst AMR is absolutely ridiculous and uh, very counterintuitive. The whole point of an anti-material rifle is to snipe armored targets at range, but uh, it's kind of hard to be accurate with a 50 BMG if it's in a three round burst. Even in game, the recoil is way too high for it to be useful at longer ranges. The first round may hit, but the heavy recoil guarantees that the second and the third are gonna miss. So this burst fire is only reliable in close quarters, and uh, running around and quickscoping people with a three round burst 50 cal is completely bonkers. <laughs> but it is also mindless fun and very based. I do really like the overall design of the Osprey. The main thing that holds it back is the three round burst feature. If they would have made it a single fire only, then it would have been a lot more useful for sniping, which is, you know, its intended role. I'll have to put the Osprey in C tier. Finally, that wraps up everything wrong with the guns in Cyberpunk, and this is the final tier list. I was honestly surprised by the guns in Cyberpunk. In, uh, both ways, I mean. Because there's a lot of good, and a lot of cringe, too. It's apparent these guys did a decent amount of research, but they also made a boatload of rookie mistakes at the same time. I'd say all the guns in A and B tier are pretty good. They all have flaws, but it's mostly stuff that could be easily fixed. The stuff in C and D tier can be salvageable, but they have a lot of work to do. As for the stuff in F tier and below, well, you're better off tossing these in the trash and starting from scratch. And, of course, there's the guns in meme tier. Well, uh, these are just big memes, and I wouldn't change a thing because they're hilarious. Of course, there's still a bunch of tech guns and smart guns to cover, but I'll have to get to those later, because holy moly, this video is already long enough, and I have suffered through enough gun cringe for now. I was truly trying to get everything wrong with the guns after all. There's still bound to be a few things I missed or got wrong myself, so as always, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I'll see y'all in the next video.